Wrestle Buddy Podcast. All about wrestling. Subscribe and follow for more content. Welcome, Wrestle Buddies, to the Wrestle Buddies podcast. And today I am joined by an absolute amazing guest. He is a promoter, wrestler, Hall of Famer, and Tennessee legend, the one and only Jeff Jarrett. How Thanks for having Jeff? me on. Wrestle Buddy, right? Yeah, <laughs> How are we doing, my man? I love your background. You got Adam there. You got uh, Money <laughs> in the Bank. You got a couple of replica belts. You got action figures, you got trading cards. And then uh, what's just behind you there? The the so the uh, that's an old school thing, right? Is that Haystacks? It is. And Big Daddy? That's Haystacks and Big Daddy, and um, on the very bottom of it is a young Tom Billiton who was in Liverpool Stadium in my city in 1977. 1977. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love I love the historic. You can tell I'm I'm uh, I love the historic stuff. So anyhow, yeah. I won't derail this interview any more. <laughs> Than we already have, but I, I love your background. Ah, uh, thanks very much, Jeff. So, yeah, we'll just get straight into some questions now. Just for the moment, I know I've watched a few of the interviews and people have asked a lot of wrestling questions. I'd like to ask you to put your promoter's hat on and uh, ask you a little few questions about that, if that's okay. Interesting. Okay, sure. I'm, uh, you know, in my world and me and Conrad, uh, he covers it all. So, uh, fire away, my friend. I'll, I'll do what I can and do what I can't. <laughs> Brilliant. So, um, as a promoter, obviously, you watch a lot of wrestling yourself. Um, at the moment, with WWE, we've seen a lot of cuts to talent. We've also seen a lot of cuts to backstage um, producers and, and whatnot, other staff backstage. With the way that WWE are restructuring the company and they keep saying budget cuts, but obviously, we know they're making a lot of profit. Do you think they're making moves to look to sell the company or to make it in a better profitable way to, you know, companies always go very profitable before they look to sell on? Do you think that could be a possibility? I mean, all every I think everything is on the table, not just because I'm a third generation promoter, so to speak, that, that you're, exactly. you're I guess you're asking me thinking I have may have some wrestling wisdom or insight, but this happens in corporations literally all around the world, all day, every day, that they streamline mm -hmm. things. Um, you know, it's a different time, obviously, uh 1999. Uh, October, it went public. And so the the um, transformation, I, I guess, if you will, of the organization through the years um, that, you know, and I'll just say, I'll, I'll try to cover the last, I don't know, seven or eight, nine, 10 years, you know, they formed the network and when, you know, forming the network and everything that was around it. Uh, so th there, were, there was a, there was a different strategy uh, and then, you know, now the, the, the network basically sits under the peacock and yes, it is international, but, uh, you, you read things. I don't have any insider knowledge in, in exact plans, but it's pretty obvious that they're going to sell the network off to different buyers around the world. Um, that's one thing. And then as far as the, the, the talent, you know, the, the original plans and creating NXTs around the world, I, I you know, you don't really know exactly. Uh, there's one man, maybe two, and I'll say Vince and Nick, that really have the dialed-in information. You know, the CFO was uh, just moved on. Christina moved on last week. So massive amount of change. Uh, the headcount and employees has been drastically reduced. Obviously, uh, you, you are well aware and, and other wrestling fans are on the talent cuts, but it's really a natural progression of the industry in so many ways that, um, you know, the coming out of the pandemic, um, I, I live here in Nashville, so I'm around the music industry. Um, it, it is music city in so many ways, not just singers and, and, uh, writers and, and, and that, but just the business of the business from tour buses and, and, and just you name it, but you can relate where I'm going that, you know, pre pandemic, this the the accessibility of Zoom. You know, I'm in my home studio. I'm sure you're in your home studio. It ch literally the pandemic has changed the world in so many ways. So being able to work from home and work virtually and and everything that goes with that, I believe that that first and foremost, Vince is a visionary promoter. But at the end of the day, his father and his grandfather were great businessmen because you got to be a great businessman to stay in business and have longevity. And so, although Vince is a great visionary, at the end of the day, 
he figures out what's best for business. And, you know, being a company that's private, he has to take care of Vince and his family and his employees. When he went public, and this is where I'm going a long way around to say is, now he is a publicly traded company and has been for years. He has to do what's best for shareholders. So if he can get the job done with a reduction in headcount and a reduction in talent headcount, it's his duty to do that. And to me, yeah. whether it's for sale or not, that's the strategy. Uh, I think it's fascinating. Uh, but you asked me to put on my promoter hat. On the flip side, the opportunities to get in this game are, 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 are massive. Uh, and so I think Vince uh, pivoting on his strategy, I'm excited to see where they take it because for years and years and years, he's you know been in the forefront and going on SmackDown years ago. That was network TV here in the States, huge. In, in your country, going from Sky to BT, fundamental shift in how they did business. But uh, you know now with uh, NXT UK being able to – look, I could talk forever on the business side yeah. of it. But um, I'll shut up. I'll shut up. BT, <laughs> BT Sports are aggressively promoted as well. Sky Sports never really promoted where BT Sports Correct. are over the side of buses. The, you know, this big – memorials, painters everywhere, they, they really are promoting it. Now, just on to AEW, I know AEW are making quite an impact at the moment and the, the starting off and the progression quite well. Now, obviously yourself, you were the first promoter to really, you know, because TNA was up there for quite a while, it really did challenge for a while and people were really taking notice of it. If you had anything to say to Tony Khan right now, kind of any advice to give him on what to do to kind of keep that momentum going, what would you say to him? Oh boy, I don't think we have enough long enough time slot, not long enough <laughs> podcast here. <laughs> I'm kidding. You know, I don't know enough about his vision for the business. So it's easy to throw out suggestions here and there, but I could throw out a suggestion and all of a sudden say, no, I'm doing that. I'm not doing that because of A, B, C, and D. And I would go, I didn't know that. Um, so, in a very broad sense, I mean, a very broad sense is, um, I think that you have to keep your eye on the ball. And I say that in that, look, lots of debuts here and there. And just over the last, what, 90 days, Punk, Danielson, and, and Cole, uh, among others, my good buddy, Jay Lethal, you know. Um, so what stands out from that? You, you know, what I, I don't know. Is it Punk's debut or Danielson's debut or a combination? Um, but it, you know, it, it, it seems like that, um, at the end of the day, any, anybody running the business, keep an eye on the ball. So I don't know what that ball is for him. That's what I'm trying to say is I don't know mm -hmm. if his goal is to get that re up from Warner media. I don't know if that goal is to make international expansion. I don't know, uh, at the end of the day, but running business and more black ink than red ink, it, it is the very simplistic deal. Um, and, and look, the con family's uber wealthy. Um, mm -hmm. but, but that being said, I, keep your eye on the ball. And, and again, I'm not saying I pretend to know what that, what is for Vince, yeah. his the eye on the ball is making shareholders happy and rightly yeah. so. People invest a lot of money into his company. So he has to make shareholders happy. I'm not sure what that ball is for Tony. Yeah. So in other words, if Tony's trying to stick with a vision that he's got, stick with that vision and don't deviate off from it, try and stick with what you, what you work things work. Correct. Yeah, correct. Okay, dog. So um, obviously in TNA, we've seen a lot of former stars that, in my eyes, you made stars in TNA with the likes of Samoa Joe and AJ Styles, and they went on to become massive stars in WWE. Is there any talent that you kind of thought at the time would go to that upper echelons that never made it there? Uh, you're going to have to translate into Hillbilly, Andy. I want to make sure that I understand. <laughs> so, obviously, AJ and Samoa got up to the top yeah. ends. They got there. Was there any other talent that you identified that never made it to that? top level you know what this is probably a perfect timing and i don't want to say never made it but jay lethal is a talent in 2007 2008 2009 2010 2000 maybe 11 i'm not perfect on timing jay has every tool in the toolbox he can work he can talk he can entertain uh, he can work multiple styles x division style so the high flying style to mat wrestling and he has, you know, obviously showcased his his ability in Ring of Honor uh, for a lot of years now. 
but he, he's a guy and no disrespect to ring of honor, but he's a guy that, that I believe has the talent to, to, to go to the very top of this business. He's really, really good. And really, he knows his craft. And, and I think that is something that it's easy to say, like a Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan is, is so good at what he does in the ring. And I'm not just talking about his, his, his ability uh, to, to wrestle. I'm just talking about being able to make others better, keeping himself over, keeping others over, connecting the dots in there. Jay has a lot of skill sets like that as well. So not that he hasn't had success, but J Jay, you know, just, and I think it's more relevant and topical because he just uh, showcased his talent uh, in the main event on Dynamite. But, um, you know, you would, uh, I'd have to think on that, uh, Andy, uh, if there's any other guys out there, because I'm sure there are. I'm, I'm sure there's, you know, Lance, Lance Hoyt is another guy that that had all the skill sets. Timing just wasn't right for him in the TNA days. But, you know, here's a guy, 6'6", six, six, that can move like uh, Lance. And, yes, he went off to Japan and is successful there. His skill sets very well. Um, man, I, I could go on and on. <laughs> Brilliant. And I know obviously you've got the podcast with Conrad My World, Jeff that at My World. You know, I'm a big fan of it. I watch it all the time. Um, I was loving the other day when Conrad said you were only in the four horsemen for one day. <laughs> yeah, you know, if you listen to it, Rick Flair did a drive by, came on, and he said that's a four horsemen. So come on now and aren't set it off years ago. You know, we've had a lot of fun with it. Brilliant. Now, I know you've got a lot going on with the podcast. Is there any chance of you coming back into a promotion or something like that? Because, you know, if I was a promoter and with the experience and wealth and knowledge, not just as a, as a wrestler, but obviously you're a third generation promoter yourself. It's like, has anybody reached out to you or have you got any plans to go anywhere? Because you just seem like you, you should be more involved with it. I, I'll tell you this much, you know, it's funny. Um, and I do these media hits and we're promoting my world and, promoting your podcast as well and, 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 you know, all things, my world, I'll say, but it, it's funny how folks will ask me that. And I, I say this with all diplomacy. If I, if I do have those plans, which I do, do you think I would share it here on your podcast? No. You know, I, I'll say this, we, we touched on it uh, with your first two questions with, you know, the WWE vision and where they're going that's very interesting and you look at AEW and my suggestion was to response you know keep your eye on the ball because there's a lot going on in AEW with talent you know coming on board and dynamite rampage and so many moving parts and my suggestion was keep your eye on the ball all this but the way the industry is and the ability to create uh talent I mean, create uh, content and all the talent that's on the market and New Japan and AAA in Mexico and, and all the great promotions around the world. There's really a lot of opportunity up there. So I am strategically analyzing all my opportunities because I, I, I think it is a really fun time to be in our industry. Yeah, and it's probably, you know, with all that thing, it's just you, you've got a lot of opportunity for yourself and it's make sure it's the right one when the time comes. Sure, sure. Yeah, maybe uh, I'm just maybe I've, I've learned something in my my uh, wisdom in my <laughs> few days in the industry yeah. for once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very wise, very wise. Um, okay, doc. So we're going to wrap it up there, Jeff. So thanks so much for joining us. I have got one favorite to ask yet. One of our writers, Jimmy, um, really good friend of mine. He said to me the other day, one of his dreams is for you to call him Slapnut. So is there any chance you can do that for us? So is that Jimmy? Yeah, Jimmy. Is that J I W -E M Y? Who's truly a Liverpool slap nut? Is he? Wait, hold on. Is he from? He's Liverpool? from F Florida. That he's from. <laughs> oh, he's from Florida. Yeah, Sunshine State over here. Hey, slappy sunshine, uh, Jimmy. You are nothing but a slap nut. Now choke on that. Brilliant. Well, Jeff, thanks so much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, very grateful for you joining us. And hopefully, we will get to speak again sometime soon. And we will continue to support your podcast. I appreciate you having me on. Yes, appreciate all the support from my world. It's uh, been quite the ride with my partner, Conrad, and uh, looking forward to uh, many more episodes. But uh, again, uh, thanks for letting me come on, and, and uh, let's do this again sometime. Brilliant. Thanks, Jeff. Yep. Thanks, Andy. Have a great afternoon. Uh, cheers. There you go.